Hi, good morning. How good is morning, everybody? everyone. Happy Monday morning. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We have the pleasure to uh, introduce you to Chrissy Parashos from Refectacil. Um, we really do value our vendor relationships and Chrissy has just been so supportive um, for us and uh, for all of you. And we're happy that she is here today to talk to us about boosting your business with some of the retail products from Refectacil. So welcome Chrissy, thank you so much. Um, before we get started, I also want to introduce Farhana. She is from our California office, and um, my name is Wendy. I'm from the Colorado office, and I see that my mom is on as an attendee, so we can all say hi <laughs> to my mom, who is really the brains behind Alexander's Aesthetics. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, before we get started, we are going to just have everyone find the question box because we are going to have a Q&A at the end but since this is kind of just like a one-way communication if you can go to your control panel and find the question box and just type in where you're calling in from we always like to we recognize some names but always like to see where people are calling in from oh Renee is on from Refecta Still hi Renee so good to see you <laughs> so I'm so glad that everybody uh, is here. We've got St. Thomas, Ontario, San Clemente, uh, Denver, Charleston, South Carolina is calling in. Hi, Janice from Denver, Shannon from Indiana. Um, so people from all over. So, okay, great. So use that question box. You can go ahead and ask questions throughout the presentation for Hannah and I will be on the back end kind of monitoring that questions. And then once Chrissy is done with her presentation, we'll kind of pop back in and we'll get those questions answered throughout. So with that, I'm going to drop off, pass it over to Chrissy. And thank you very much again, Chrissy, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy, and thank you, Farhana, and thank you for having me today at uh, Alexander's Aesthetics, virtually. It was always a pleasure. So as uh, Wendy had mentioned, we will be talking about retailing, um, how to boost your business, though, with retailing Refectasil products. And we know we do find sometimes that uh, retailing can be a little bit of a challenge. So with this presentation, what we want to do is be able to um, show uh, some tips that you can implement in your salon and spot to help you boost uh, these um, retail products and be able to sell them to your clients. Especially now with the holiday season coming, it's the best time too, okay? So we will start off first with, give me one second, there we go. So retailing in the salon and spa. So when you work in the lash and brow business, there's no question that when your clients are happy with their lashes and brows, so is your bottom line, correct? But so we know that the road towards client satisfaction starts with the service that you provide your client when they're in the chair or the bed, but where it ends and ultimately where it continues is with the refectosol products that you send them home with. And as I mentioned, that little, little box right there, retailing in the spa allows your clients to be able to take care of themselves uh, when they leave the premises, right? So we want them to be able to take something home and be able to um, assist that treatment, right? If you go get your hair done and maybe you processed it and it was a little too too much like over processing because of the color you wanted to achieve, um, you know, they might send you home with here's an aftercare oil, just try and use this or here's a mask, try to use this at the beginning, you know, to, to bring back that vitality to the hair after being processing. So if we're taking care and doing home treatments on our hair or taking something at home after the service, we need to do the same thing with our lashes and brows. They need that maintenance as well because they need that hydration, moisturization uh, on our lashes and brows as well um, to take at home and maintain that until our next visit, okay? So the value in retailing. So if you were to hurry up and scoot your customer out the door in a hurry and you didn't have the chance to retail them any of the lash and brow aftercare, you are essentially just leaving money on the table. As well, you're not providing the best aftercare treatments uh, that they need for their lashes and brows after they have been processed. So there's a two things you're losing on even maintaining that customer loyalty. You know, at the end, retailing also enhances that customer loyalty. It's not just about selling, it's about for them to be happy with their service, but able to prolong and maintain it at home as well. So for example, when clients skip, 
skimp out on proper lash and brow aftercare maintenance, they can risk the service fading um, or possibly not lasting due to poor home, home care maintenance. So apart from selling them that retail item, you should also give them a little home care routine that goes along with it to, so that they can understand why do I need this product, correct? Okay, so the first person they'll actually blame on you when they start seeing that their service is fading um, and their maybe the color is fading or the lashes aren't, aren't staying as long as it's supposed to upwards, uh, they're gonna blame you. So instead of gaining what could have been a loyal client by making a simple sale, you're likely to lose the repeat business, okay? So we want to be able to interconnect that, the retailing with proper client satisfaction and enhancing that loyalty with your client. It's crucial that they understand that they'll extend the life of whatever Refectisil service uh, they just received by using any of these uh, Refectisil um, retail products. As you can see on the side of the screen, on the right side, we have our dream team, uh, trio dream team, that was a tongue twister, on the side. So we have our lash and brow booster, we have our lash and brow styling gel, and we have our lash and brow care balm. All three of these products can be used both on your lashes and brows and no need to be buying separate ones for your lashes or your brows. So these are all going to extend their service uh, when they go home, especially for people who might have an issue, say for example, with color on their brow. They don't last as long if they're in a humidity, hum like hot country, or they sweat a lot, they're gymnasts. Um, they have the styling gel, the one with the gold cap, that's going to help them to maintain that color. And that's, they're satisfied with the service because they might've went somewhere else and it didn't last as long, but they didn't have that aftercare to provide for them. But now they come to you, uh, they share that concern with you that they don't, their, their tinting doesn't last as long. Uh, you provide the service, but at the same time, you tell them here's a product that you take home that will help you to prolong that service and, make, and lock in that color a little bit longer. So. Now you understand why retailing can be very important to your cu customer's um, uh, service that they have just done. Uh, and, and when you are honest with that and telling the reasoning why they need it and the benefits of it, they, that way they'll be more confident in your recommendations down the line and they won't assume that you're just trying to uh, make money off of them, right? Uh, you're actually looking into the care of their lashes and brows. Take the time to explain to clients what it, what it is what it is about the product that makes it the best possible solution for their needs and complement the service, okay? So take that time with them. And you can always um, talk about this during your consultation part as well, um, introduce, and we'll see that in the later in the presentations. So having trouble moving Refectisil retail products? Well, it's not just you. Uh, many spas don't do as well as they could with retailing. Some people just don't like uh, selling, they'll do the, they can do the best services, perform the best services, whether it's waxing, facials, whatever in the industry. But when it comes to selling, some might shy away a little bit. It's not their forte. So why are spas missing out on the potential revenue source that could dramatically improve profit margins? Part of the reason is that many spas lack sales training and a comprehensive sales strategy. So it's very important, as we'll see in the um, presentation, that the salons and spas, the owner should be having these, uh, you know, regularly monthly or bi-monthly meetings to help with uh, retailing strategy. What went wrong? What can we do? What can we adjust? What can we change? Okay, so sales don't just happen. You have to work at them. It is some work that you have to uh, uh, provide in order to start seeing your sales happening when it comes to retail items. Spa retail is critical not only to profitability, but also to the spa's overall brand value, values and vision. So retail sales are an important component of any spa's profitability, uh, but many spa directors struggle with how to create a meaningful retail concept, and that's what is a downfall, and how to engage the professionals or their staff with selling, which is another downfall, right? So, and here's a percent, percentage of understanding uh, where retail um, struggles. So staff is resistant to sell. 75% of staff uh, is resistant to sell. That's a high percentage amount. Not enough space to carry all the lines we want. That's 61%, uh, which, okay, if you don't have the space to carry everything you need, you probably just need to choose that hero product from the brand that you use that is going to do it, do the best, right? Instead of having to bring it, bring in uh, so many and you don't have the spacing on your, sh your, on your shelves to show your, your clients. Uh, merchandising does not compel guests to purchase. 
So is it the way you present it? Is the way you've explained it? What's going to help to compel the client to be able to purchase it? Too much competition from online sources. Yes, that's a battle that we can struggle with because Amazon has everything, seems, and um, people will try to find something that's cheaper. You know, I see with, even with some of my friends, like, oh, Chrissy, you do lash lessons stuff. I just bought one off of Amazon. Oh, but you know what? It fried my lash. Or so. Sometimes it's not the best thing to be looking at, um, at Amazon prices, especially when some, I mean, uh, products, especially when it's something that is professional and we want to aid in caring for the hairs and the lashes, our lashes and brows. So, but Amazon will be a great competition for us when it comes to retailing items. High cost of shipping, so the shipping will be too much to bring in these retail. Lack of vendor support, so are the vendors not helping you with understanding the product and being able to sell it? Um, inventory control, lack of vendor support, we said that. I don't know why I have it. Oh, training, one's merchandising, one's training. Uh, vendor stocking issues, you know, oh, if you're constantly out of stock on your retail items, your client will become upset and seek that out elsewhere. And guest theft. Okay, so there's the percentages uh, broken down. Oh. It's more always better. Well, when it comes to the amount of product or number of brands for your salon retail, you need to ask yourself, how much is too much? Because the last thing you want to do is actually to overwhelm your client with too many choices. Um, I struggle at a restaurant with too many choices and I'm like, oh goodness. And then you end up using like the most basic thing because you're so overwhelmed with the uh, selections. So uh, don't overwhelm them because also uh, you are going to also overwhelm them with the um, amount that's going to cost them too. And they might also shy away. Okay. Um, and also, if you're also if you're bringing too much of these products in, it's, as I mentioned here, it says uh, you're tying up too much money into your inventory, and then you might be wondering where's all the money going, and then and then you're you will struggle struggle as well. So find the right balance. Stock stock just enough selection and quantity to have the products your clients need and want without your shelving shelving looking sparse. Uh, but not so much that you're stuck with more product than you can move. Because at the end, what happens when you can't, when you have so much product that you can't move and it sits and it sits there, you're discounting it. Then you're discounting it heavily uh, just to get it out and bring new inventory. You don't want to do that. You want to grow into your retail and build up as you go along. Try not to worry as much about having something for every single possible client or need of that client. You can't do that. Uh, your whole, you'd be a, like a major boutique store if that was like a, um the option to carry everything that every for every need um we said not to worry yeah instead consider any client's request as a learning experience that helps drive your product offering right because uh what they request we might ha not have it um or you might have something that could tailor to that or or maybe if you're hearing that request a lot, maybe from another product that you had that you don't get the request, request you substitute it with the new. Just understanding what your clients are requesting and wanting can also help you um, in aiding in what kind of product you're going to bring into your uh, salon or spa for retail. So let's look at some effective ways to strengthen your effective sales sales. The first one is presentation. We know presentation is everything. Uh, whether it's a holiday season or you're just looking for a great way to display products year round, you have to know one thing, people shop with their eyes. So uh, it's nice to have a nice organized and visually appealing uh, retail display. For example, in this picture here, we have our new makeup line called Line and Shine. So you can fill in the brows and you have a highlighter as well, which I'm currently wearing in my brows and I put some highlighter right here in my on the corner of my eyes. So uh, the presentation is slick, it's nice. Uh, that will catch the attention of your customers, um, your client's eyes. Now, why should you look at having an organized and visually appealing refectical retail display? Because it's important, as I mentioned, to grab your client's attention while they're in their waiting room, while they're doing their consultation, uh, and also while they're uh, getting getting checked out for their service. Um, also, it says here in the note, if you experience a quiet period mid-afternoon or just a slow day, use this time to freshen up your retail display. Sometimes if you just keep it looking the same, the same, the same, the same, it's the client knows not to look anymore because it's the same 
product that's there. But if you freshen it up with a new uh, uh, new item of the week or so forth, uh, even on your as a P, uh, POP point of purchase, refreshing, you know, you can say uh, we, new weekly item, you know, this is a special for this week, or this is a new um, retail item and have it right there to show them. But always spruce it up, change it up so that they are actually looking in, in that section as well. Sell retail at the reception. This is actually kind of, I would say, like the easiest way or the easy way out if you're not really good at uh, selling retail. If it's right there on the um, receptionist desk while they're uh, cashing out, uh, they'll be looking at it. So here we give this, a, we, we talk about, think of when you line up and to pay at the supermarket, you're surrounded by all of those, like especially Walmart. Uh, uh, when I go to Walmart, I'm surrounded by all those last minute small items that tempt you just to spend a little bit more. And what happens is that you do get tempted. You're always going to pick it, but just one is you just, you picked it, you touch it, you picked it, you bought it. So, so um, it's a, it's a smart way to help you to uh, retail. So do the same in your salon and spa. Pop a basket of lash and brow uh, care. As you can see, we have the two ones there, how they come in their, in their display. Um, if you want to make more more holiday, you can have a nice basket with a bow and dump a couple of those in there and and you know um, advertise these as your aftercare for the holiday, right? And this and the run up to Christmas is a great time to have a basket of inexpensive, inex sorry, inexpensive stock filler stocking fillers on your reception desk. So these are amazing stocking fillers uh, to for the holiday season because they are retail items. So your client could even buy them for their family uh, to, to try out because one's a booster it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to have the service done because one's a lash and brow booster, which many people do want to boost their lashes uh, to add growth or length. And then the other one is a care ball. Maybe their, their relative was doing lash extensions and they damaged a little bit their lashes and need some kind of maintenance or care for their, for their lashes. So they can sell them the care ball. I mean, they can uh, stocking stuff for uh, a care ball. Okay. Um, offer bundles and promotions. And as you can see on the right hand side, I just put some suggestions, like some ideas on how you would uh, offer these uh, bundles or, or promotions. So who does not love a good deal, especially if the item they're buying will make them feel like they're at your spa every day, right? So with our care items, with our styling gel, they'll see that. Um, that uh, richness in their in their brows or their lashes, that that gloss, that that moisture. Um, also, the pencils, the new brow pencils. You know, in between their service, when the brows start to fade a little bit, they just want to do a little touch up with little strokes to 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 give that depthness until they come for their next tinting. We've got that, so they they have that at home uh, item to to help them in between the services. So bundle bundle products with services or bundle products together. Use holidays for promotions, offer discounts or gifts with purchase, run a contest, offer bring a friend or family packages. Okay, so those are some uh, ideas. Uh, so for example, offer a discount on products used during the client service. So for example, let's say your client just got a brow lamination service done um, and tint. Upsell the styling gel, which is this one right here with the gold cap right here, the, this, this is styling gel, um, use as an aftercare by offering 25% discount on it. So they did the service, they paid for the service of a brow lamination, which can be up to 75 to $95 for the service. And now you're telling them, you know what, we have a promotion for the aftercare because you will ideally need it because your brows have been um, uh, processed, like they've been uh, chemically processed with the Lash Perm Solution, but also you've got them tinted and you wanna prolong that freshness of the tint. This will do both. As well, a third thing what it will do is that when your brows start to lose that brow lamination look, like they start to fall down because it's time for a touch up, this styling gel can hold them into place until your next service. So wow, I'm getting these three effects out of this one, uh, two, but I'm also getting 25% off. Uh, a client's gonna be so inclined after you explain those three things, a client's gonna tell, tell you like, essentially take my money, I want it, okay? Another example, if they purchase a lash lift service and tint, they will receive the styling gel for free. So sometimes the lash, the, if the lash lift service can cost up to like $125, uh, you can include that styling gel for free. For holidays, holidays, get your lashes and brows ready for Christmas. Uh, you can... If, uh, you can put that, you know, get your lashes and brows ready for Christmas holidays and you will receive the trio take home care package at 50% off. So 
the suggestions like that. So you get the booster, the lash and brow booster, you get the styling gel and you get the um, um, care balm at 50% off. And then they have these the dream trio, trio to take home and, and make themselves feel good, their brows and lashes. The possibilities for, for promote, promotions and bundles are pretty much endless and only subjects subject to the limits of your creativity and imagination. So there could be much more I could have wrote on here, but um, uh, we'd be just spending the whole time talking about different types of promotions and bundles. Promote, promote, promote. As you can see, all our social media, Facebook, Instagram, website, email. Let's not, uh, let's not your special offers and discounts get unnoticed uh, by the public. And essentially, that helps you too. That helps you great deal because, you know, the power of social media. You know, some somebody might see it and be like to their friend, oh, look, they're offering, the salon that we go to is offering this uh, discount or these uh, beauty products for discount and so forth, these home care products. So promote, promote, promote. Uh, make sure. Uh, Make sure you make it one of your priorities to promote them across every marketing channel, including email marketing, social media, and in your physical space too. Have a nice little uh, frame with a promotion that, uh, that, that catches our eye they're walking towards the treatment room, okay? Getting the word out about your spa's promotion is the first and perhaps most important step towards generating more retail revenue at your business. Um, but you should also get the word out on new items, not just the items you have. But when you bring in a new item, make that excitement, make that announcement that you have a new product. So, for example, Reflectisil has the new Align and Shine products, which are retail brow liners and a highlighter, as I mentioned. So why not promote this with a special post, even um, a live story? You know, you take them to the uh, display and talk about um, the, the new uh, retail item and what it does, what it's for. Um, and then showcases and on your platforms on your on your even a picture on your social media uh, platforms of the display and why why it's useful to have these pencils in the on the brow uh, liner uh, the brow liner and the highlighter promoting slow movers is important to have the product sell so if you have a lot of slow mover uh, moving products uh, promote that as well by an email you know if you're if uh, you know we have some items of this uh, for sale, which you know, your, on your next um, service visit, would you like us to add this to your basket, your purchase? You know, like send them reminders too. Uh, so, for example, maybe your styling gel sells better than your care balm, and you tend to, I should say, tend you tend to heavily promote it because of that fact, right? So you're always promoting your styling gel after a service, but you forget about the importance of the care balm because the care balm um, has more nutrients in it for a nighttime treatment. So that's gonna actually feel like a mask for your lashes and your brows. So you're heavily focusing on the styling gel, you forget about the care bomb. Well, now you need to switch that up and maybe on your next IG post, your Instagram post, uh, show the benefits of having a night treatment as well. You know, you're not discredit, discredit, discrediting the day treatment, but now it's like, let's add a night treatment and your lashes are gonna be so plump, so rich, um, and after treatments, and they can continue using these even if they're not getting a treatment, right? If the benefit is whether you are or not doing a treatment, it benefits heavily when you're doing a treatment because it keeps the lashes and brows um, in proper condition. But if they just want to use it because it's got some castor oil in it, it's got some rich mineral oils, it's going to, it's going to maintain that benefit of the, the hair continually, they're going to keep on purchasing it, right? Okay. Oops, promote, promote. So talk about retail items whenever you can, but this is a little tricky because you don't want to really overdo it. So during booking, clients want to get a brow lamination as they notice some gaps in their brows. Well, get a good retail item to sell along with the service as a reflection of lash and brow booster. So when you're, book, when you're booking them in for that uh, brow lamination, well, listen, we have a retail item that I, 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 I would suggest purchasing it as well because in connection with your brow lamination, this is going to help fill in those gaps. Um, and then essentially on your next brow lamination, your brows are going to be even more fuller and, and uh, fluffy looking. So explain it to them that way and get that retail product into their, um, into their site or into their hands during that booking. Uh, during consultation, so for example, you may have found out that your new client is coming to you in order to substitute a lash extension services to a lash lift because of damage to their lashes due to continual application of lash extensions. So right then and there is a great opportunity to mention that care bomb. So that Reflectisil does have a great product that will help bring back the vitality of their, of their lashes uh, and the condition of their lashes by, by using the care bomb. 
So there you had a good opportunity. If you didn't say anything, you lost a good opportunity to make that client feel happy and knowing that, oh, we can solve that issue here with this product, okay? Um, so then it says here during uh, check-in, here's some other options that you can you can talk about uh, retail items while they're waiting, during the treatment, uh, during payment, and through social media. But once again, and the important part I put there, keep in mind that you don't want to put off your client by trying to push them, like pushing too much uh, into buying something that they may or may not, may not want. So if somebody didn't express anything, um, I still don't leave that client out in the loop. If they didn't express anything or they're they're fine with their brows or their lashes after the treatment, um, I would I would suggest, even though you don't have anything wrong, this product, for example, a styling gel, will help to just continue hydrating your your lashes and your brows for your next service. If they don't want it's fine, but I at least told them the importance of why they would want, say, the styling gel. Okay, so sell retail products with moderation and know when to stop. Okay. You know, last thing you want is to irritate your client and then they, you might lose as well a client. Make products available for purchase online. So there's this should be a no-brainer by now, like online and mobile booking, right? You know, with the pandemic, we moved into online uh, booking. So it's like, was touchless and this and that. And um, why not put your products as well uh, that they should be able to, they will be able to order online. Maybe they're not coming in for their next service yet. And they ran out of the product and you guys forgot to mention that, oh, you're running out of your product. You, you know, you bought this three months ago. Do you need a replenish of your styling gel? And they forgot. And now they can just go click, click on, on your online, on your web store um, and be able to purchase that product and get it shipped to them. So if you're not making your products available online, once again, you're leaving money on the table. And as I mentioned, during the pandemic, online sales increased tremendously due to the lockdowns. People were not able to purchase the product uh, in person, so they were getting them online. And they would can still continue doing this, for example, if they're not coming in as often to get their um, their services, then they still have the option of buying any of the retail items that ran out. And also many do find online shopping easier. Um, it's, it's just a click, click, a quick click on the computer and they're able, or their phone, and they're able to, um, not have to travel to go get the product they can do it from the comfort of their own home so once again do not lose this sales opportunity so keep on top of your inventory very important inventory can become neglected and when other tasks seem to to be uh, much more pressing if you don't keep track then you will risk not having the items available when somebody actually does want want it and wants to purchase it right that moment keeping track of your stock will ensure that you have everything at hand to service your clients. It also boosts your salon's retail sales. So remember, inventory management is an integral, integral part of a salon's or spa's profitability. If you don't have it there, the customer will um, be upset, you know, if they're if you're continuously wait, if they're continuously waiting for that product to come in and they're gonna go seek it elsewhere. And as we mentioned, Amazon is an easy place to go get uh, stuff if they can't get it from the salon or spa. Uh, look into a spa software that can manage your inventory, uh, but also it can alert you when your products are running low. That's a great system, um, uh, a great um, software if it can alert you as well. You're running low on these items, let's uh, replenish that order. Or it even can, uh, when it's running low, can even replace that order for you. Um, uh, sorry, replenish that order, like send out an order for your um, items that are getting low. Uh, so note, while you never want to run out of product, you don't even want to purchase um, too much of the product that will just sit idle on the shelf and catch dust. Okay, so there's that balance. Knowing what you need and how much you need are the two numbers you need to get right. And that gets gradually when you start selling that product and understanding, okay? Really get to know your client. That's also important, as we mentioned before, right? You know, because you, if you're talking to them during the consultation and so forth, you're trying to get to know your client and that leads you to, okay, what's the service I'm gonna offer them, cater to them, but also what is the re retail item I'm gonna provide for them. Uh, the days of pushing all your products to everyone are long gone. This can overwhelm your clients and they may feel pressured to make unnecessary purchases. And then they don't feel so excited next time they're in because they're kind of might be, they're like, this product just sat at home, I didn't use it, and I made an unnecessary purchase, and they feel like they might be as well pushed for another product. So be mindful of that. The better you know who your clients are, the better you can offer the products they want and need in the way that is most appealing to them. Uh, make personalized product re recommendations based on client purchase history and other specifics. 
So also, when you're doing this, to find out what uh, retail items to be able to provide to them, ask questions, record that information, send surveys too. That can help you. When you send surveys to your client database, that can also let you know, oh, the majority of people are actually wanting a product like this or actually wanting this product to, uh, to be brought in or so forth. That will help you a lot as well. Pay attention to what your valued clients tell you and adjust your sales strategy and retail offerings accordingly. Show some love to your loyal customers. So have you ever thought about rewarding your loyal customers? Uh, we cannot stress how important it is to maintain customer profiles and track your customer loyalty. So have that customer profile. Uh, could this be maybe the way to, or the key to selling more spa retail? It is, surely it is. Uh, say thank you to your most loyal customers with a discount specifically just for them, right? Um, and reward your existing customers. Rewarding your existing customers will keep them coming back, okay? And that will be able to generate more uh, revenue from either services or retail, okay? So think about that. Think of how you can reward your, your loyal oops, uh, customers, which also leads to have an awesome loyalty program. And here are some, like we put some different selections as a different um, ideas on how to have a loyalty program. So your loyalty program should not only reward the treatments and services as we tend to do, uh, you know, get 10, you know, get nine manicures and your 10th one is free or something like that, or you get $10 off, but also for retail purchases. So how can you improve your loyalty program? Well, here are some suggestions. You have a point system, which some people, some salons have brought this type of um, loyalty program. So one of the most popular ways of creating a reward program for your client is through a point system. Most salon owners prefer the point system because it's easy to implement and straightforward for customers to understand. A certain level of points should be used towards purchasing a retail item. So as we mentioned, they accumulate a certain amount of points and they get, say, for every point it's a dollar or so forth, or every three points a dollar. When they reach that uh, amount, it should also be used or the amount to, to um, cash in, it should also work towards your retail items, okay? Punch cards, another great way and effective method. So after like, for example, this little punch card here, after five punches receive a, a free Reflectosil styling gel or $10 off any lash and brow retail products, okay? So that also gets them coming in from the services often with a, with a points card or a loyalty card, right? Um, social rewards. In this era of digital revolution, your salon needs a social media presence. So since all beauty shops are in a visual industry, salons can attract plenty of new clients through Instagram and Facebook. So if your client, after they had a service or, or they bought a retail product, if they tag you in a post of their lash or brow service they enjoyed or a product they're using they like, you can then grant reward points for each post or give them access to special discounts on Rebecca Soul retail items. So you had a client that left after brow lamination and went on social media and tagged you and said, I just had this wonderful brow lamination at so-and-so salon. You need to go, you know, you know, visit Susie. She's awesome. This is business for you. This is uh, free marketing for you. This is, you know, they're advertising for you, right? So why not offer some kind of, uh, um, as it says here, point system or offering them um, a point for each um, post they put, they can get a free product or something towards their, their treatment. But as we're focusing on retail items, it could be something on, on a retail item. Or you can reward them free, you know, after you see them posting that, you can say here, you know, thank you for your post. I gained maybe 30 clients after your post. Uh, we're sending you a free uh, brow booster, okay? Stay in touch with guests. Make sure to take notes of what your clients purchase and retail items. This is why I mentioned maybe your, your program that you have uh, will send you an alert that can tell you, oh, your client's running low on this uh, retail item because they bought it six months ago and it's about to finish, right? It only lasts for six months. That way you can send a friendly reminder when it's about to run out and they can repurchase, okay? Um, but ask them if they would like to replenish or include it into their next service appointment cost. Okay, so either, you know, they're coming for a brow lamination, I'm gonna add that other $30 of the, or the $40 of the styling gel into their service cost, okay? Set team goals. This will be very important because 
you know, a lot of companies, we set goals, whether it's in sales or so forth, you set goals for the next month or the next year or so forth. You know, what do we have to work for to correct and set that goal and work towards it and try to achieve it and or even surpass it. So set sale targets and make sure everyone is aligned, reward the whole team when company targets are met or exceeded. Train and incentivize the team. So don't assume that your facialists, your nail technicians and your stylists are also salespeople. Uh, majority are just not salespeople, right? Uh, like as I mentioned earlier, they are good with their hands. They can give you an immaculate service, but when it comes to sales, some will shy away. People don't necessarily come out of aesthetic school with sales skills, uh, which I can remember in 2000, we didn't really focus on sales. So um, luckily I love talking to people about products and stuff like that. So sales didn't come hard for me, but it, it can be uh, hard for a lot of people. And selling is a skill that needs to be taught. Take the time to give extra support to underperformers and help them achieve company goals. And here we put a study. In a 2017 study, uh, staff resistance to selling was the biggest challenge in spa retail sales. So it is an issue out there, right, in the salon and spa industry, which means as a salon owner, you will need to train your team and figure out what incentives will motivate them if just commission doesn't work, okay? Um, and also note, use your software performance management system to track who is meeting sales goals and who isn't. You can track your top, like, esthetician or your top or, or your staff, right? If someone isn't meeting goals, that, that, that isn't going to fix itself. This is where you need to give that extra support to the underperformers and help them to, to maybe get a little bit better. They might not be the greatest, but if you incentivize them to, if you give them some kind of incentive, they can get much better into their uh, selling, their retailing skills, selling retails, retail products, okay? So, are you ready after all these ideas? If you're a salon owner or if you are a, I, in my last webinar I did this, I had a professional be like, I am gonna take this to my salon owner to help them out. So hopefully you are all now feeling much more confident to be able to um, help your clients and sell these amazing retail products. And as we have here, I did bring some physical ones to, sh like to show on the camera. So a lot of our new products. So this is our eye care pads, which come 10 in a box. These are, apart from, excuse me, using these in the services, these are actually really good retail item for the client to take home and use um, on their eyes as well. So it comes in a box of 10. And then as I mentioned, we've got our brow booster that looks really nice in this place, the holographic um, uh, tube. And it is a bigger size, it's a six milliliter size. A lot of them are three or two milliliter size. And it's got a nice tip to be able to use on your lashes and brows. So this, these are great products for your, for your um, to retail and then the new shine, line and shine with the pencils. I have to say these pencils are such high quality. I've used a lot of pencils and I do use uh, Benefits pencils and I love it. And I started using these ones when we got them in and they go on so soft and create such nice hair strokes. Three different colors, light, medium, dark brown with the brushes on the other end to brush your brow. Um, you can even use this as an eyeliner too. So they are awesome products along with the, um, they're a little bit on the higher end. Uh, so they might be a little bit higher in the pricing, but they're very good quality. And then you have your highlighter. So these are a lot of the goodies from Refractacil, as you can see in the image there, the care ball and the styling gel. Um, even the eye makeup remover, you might have a question, you might see that there, why is the eye makeup remover there? We've had a lot of people say, uh, um, even salon owners or even professionals telling us that their clients uh, like this product because they don't feel irritated. A lot of, I've, I'm especially that type of person that I've used a lot of liquid um, eye makeup removers and they irritate my eyes so much that I just use the sheets. Uh, but I find the, the Refectosil one helps so much. I don't feel irritated. And that's been um, told by a lot of professionals. So they were like, can we sell this retail? Why not? Your clients can take the eye makeup remover and use it at home. The benefit of it is non-oily. So if they had just done a brow lamination and tint or they did a lash lift and tint and they can't be using anything that has oil for the next 24 hours, but they put some kind of waterproof makeup on, they could be using this and not um, harm the, or what's the word called, uh, lessen the look of the brow lamination or the lash lift or the 
effectiveness of it. It won't let it go down. So the eye makeup remover is awesome. And if you can see that little red, the pink circle, it says that it's lash strengthening. It's actually hair strengthening. With every wipe that you do, it adds in all these like cysteine, all these amino acids that are going to moisturize and hydrate your lashes and your brows. So even better. So those are the items. So those are all our, our retailing. I'll see if there's any questions, but I'm going to pass it on. Oh, there's a slide too. I forgot before I pass it on to Wendy. Um, we'd love you guys to stalk us on social media. So follow us on Instagram. Uh, we've got our Rebecca Cell North America, um, the main um, Instagram account. We've got the Browista by Rebecca Cell, which is my account as a trainer. We've got Alexander Aesthetics. Uh, same thing when you go on Facebook, it's Rebecca Cell North America. And then for Alexander Aesthetics Incorporation. And then we have, um, if you go on Facebook, please review us. I'm sure Alexander Aesthetics and myself would love to know what you thought about the webinar. Um, and also visit our educational websites. We have our Refectistol one. If you're also wanting to look uh, to to under, to freshen your skills on how to use the Refectistol products, you can go on there. But also to be able to purchase your products, you can go to Alexander Aesthetics because we do not sell any products on our Refectistol education. It's just strictly education. Uh, but you can have the assistance of Alexander Aesthetics when it coming to purchasing the products that we mentioned today. And then for any educational assistance, if it's something like technical that I can help you with that maybe um, Alexander's Aesthetics didn't quite have the answer to, you can reach us at education at cbngroup.com, but also any of your questions that you have um, can go to education at alexandersaesthetics.com. Okay, so now is where I'm going to pass the next Thank slide you. and pass to Wendy. And if there's any questions, let me know. Wendy. Yeah, let's get to the questions and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Um, Mary Jessie has a question. She thought the castor oil would take out the brow tint too quickly. Okay, so good, good um, uh, question. What you would have to tell your customer to do? Okay, so if it was, it was, if it was directly after a brow tint or or a lash tint or any like service from Rebectasil, they have to wait 24 hours. Because yes, it does have some oil components in it, so it's going to be too heavy. So within that 24 hours, the hair is trying to seal. It will seal before 24 hours, but in order to give people that that same aftercare, like that guideline, we say don't do anything in within 24 hours, like water, makeup, oils. Wait till after 24 hours. So that um, castor oil, that uh, care bomb, will be used after 24 hours, and it won't affect it. It won't break it down because the hair follicle has already uh, sealed. Now they can start in the morning and use the styling gel uh, to seal in their their color, and at nighttime they can just do the um, the care bomb to sleep with. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Jazz just added a comment that her clients love taking home their eye cat eye care pads so thank you jazz for that comment that's awesome and you can put them as well uh what i do is i put it in the fridge when i know my clients coming and about like a half an hour before they come i put it in the fridge and then when i put it onto their eyes it adds that more um cooling effect so they feel so relaxed um mm. so they're there i use them at home i walk around at home and i put these and i saw some dramatic like nice uh, like smoothness into my eyes so i really like them so thank you for the feedback Yes. Um, Farah would like to know, does anyone use the iPads for an add-on during the service and how much would you charge? Yes, perfect. So I had done a webinar on um, adding value to your uh, lash and brow services. So to offer night treatment, right? So, um, you know, when you do your brow lamination or your brow tint or your lash lip or your, or your lash tint, any of those services, add these um, apart from these uh, pads holding down bottom lashes when you're doing the lash lift, they're also giving a treatment. So in any of those services added on, and I usually say um, they are a little bit on the higher end as well. So I usually say between five to eight dollars, you can add extra to your um, service, your service fee. Yeah, when you when you're offering these, so that you just get the cost, be able to help you with the cost. Okay, great. Um, and that was the, all of the questions. We have a couple more minutes. So if you guys have more questions, go ahead and put those in the box. I will pop back in here so you can see my face while I'm talking. Okay, there. <laughs> Thank you, Chrissy, for the um, great information. Um, just a little bit uh, real quick about Alexander's Aesthetics. Um, 
usually we do this in the beginnings. So we kind of switched it up because we wanted to make sure Chrissy got to the meat of her presentation. But we are a wholesale distributor um, working with uh, wonderful vendors such as Refectacell. Um, we do carry, we're a family run business. So there's my mom on the right hand side. Um, she took the company over from my cousin's family about 20, 20, 25 years ago. And then I opened the store in Colorado about five years ago. And here's a picture of our wonderful staff. So you can see everybody um, that you call in and talk to. So we do offer um, supplies for your services, um, but we just want to make sure that you know that we're more than just a wholesale distributor. So we do offer education and customer support. We have on-staff estheticians that are here to help. And then we also have our wonderful vendors because there are times Chrissy knows that someone will call with a question. And um, if we don't know it, we will call our vendor and get the get the answer for you. So it's just great to have that kind of support. Um, <clears throat> we do also do drop shipping. So since we talked about retail, we just wanna make sure that you guys know that if you have a client who is in need of a product, you don't have it on your shelves, um, we do drop ship. So that is available from our website. So we're happy to do that for your clients um, and to help with your retail. If you, uh, again, are out of inventory or you just don't have that on the shelves and it's something you think that your client can need, just um, go ahead and order online from us and we can drop ship that directly to your clients. So I want to make sure you guys knew about that. Um, so Jazz just answered part of that last question. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear it. So Jazz says she adds eye care pads to a service for $5 and retails them for $8 individually. Oh, perfect. That's what she's doing, yes. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you, Jazz, for Thank that. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Christy, because I think, um, so I guess with that, we did just a lot, 45 minutes, so it was a pretty quick webinar. With that, we'll wrap it up. I just want to make sure that you know how to get in touch with us. Um, we have um, our website and our contact information here, but I think everybody has it. At the end of this webinar, you will receive an email with the recording of this, so you can rewatch that and um, just know that we're always here for you. Okay, one more question just came in, so let's get that answered. Um, from Liz, is it okay to apply lash styling gel right after the service? Yes, the styling gel is meant to use it after you're done because there's no heavy oils in there. Um, it's actually to help hydrate. So it's like after you've done a shampoo and then you condition your hair, but you don't want to put oil yet because it might be too heavy for the hair. Same concept. So yes, use it after your treatment. Uh, any lash or brow treatment that you did, put it on uh, and then they're good to go. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And she says thank you too. You're very welcome. Thanks for the <laughs> question. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us and we hope to see you on um, future webinars. Thank you everyone and have a great thank day. You.